This is a big deal. You might think that Luffy being a three billion berry emperor of the sea was already the rarely dusted ceiling of pirate notoriety, but this lie, nay, this entertainment that a certain Birdman is about to publish is a very big problem for us. Because Vegapunk is a nexus of this world and upon acquiring him, all eyes are going to be on Luffy as well as presumably other body parts, perhaps even threatening parts like fists and foots, foots. Yeah, foots, I said what I said. And one of the big initial questions we have is why, Birdman? Why, why would you do this to us? Come on, we've been pretty good friends for a while now. The big news Morgan's agenda is really interesting because he's basically an in-world Oda. His mission is to make the story more exciting for the people who are actually living in the story, which shouldn't be too surprising because the last time we saw Morgan's was actually quite recently in chapter 1053, where he appeared saying, there's nothing like good old live entertainment. No one manipulates the story except for Bird. And and just like Oda, Morgans has a very good sense of exactly how to deliver a story. For example, when it comes to the established villainous powers that were Big Mom and Kaido, Morgans painted Luffy and the Worst Generation as heroic underdogs who against all odds were challenging the system on multiple occasions. Which, depending on your perspective, these stories could have gone completely the other way around. Morgans could have said Big Mom easily defends attack by Straw Hat Luffy on Whole Cake Island. But I suppose hearing about strong villains doing strong villain stuff isn't really interesting. It's more just kind of depressing and and even worse, it's predictable. However, this situation is very different because this time Morgans has flipped and is presenting Luffy as the big bad villain man. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, because it is very much in keeping with Morgans portrayal of Luffy. Morgans kind of has his own character arc for Luffy going in the background. For example, during Whole Cake Island, the article Morgans published made Luffy out to be this tactical mastermind, this evil, evil mastermind, mastermind. I'm not very good at this today. <laughs> evil mastermind, that's what Morgans wants to present Luffy as because that's an exciting, thrilling villain man. So this is just continuing Luffy's evil character development. And in the eyes of the world, I guess it's sort of putting him in a very similar position to Blackbeard. However, there is an issue that arises when the world government is directly involved because if Morgans were to cast Luffy as the hero in this story, then it would essentially be outing the corruption of our stable system. And that, that is not entertainment, that is revolution. And Morgans is not dragon. He doesn't want people to be scared, angry, and uprising. He wants them to be compelled by the story. So compelled that they just continue to sit there and wait relatively impatiently for the next installment. Kind of like what we do with actual One Piece chapters. And in the great words of the Birdman himself, I may be a miser, but I am first and foremost a journalist. I am a DJ of words, one who occasionally spins lies to move the hearts of the people. I decide what gets published. Morgan's, I think, confusing the word journalist with novelist there, but look, we get the point. And I have to wonder, did the world government predict that Morgan's was going to take this path? Because what they've done here is to not sugarcoat it, to uncoat it, to rip off all of the sugar and turn these Kellogg's crunchy nuts into regular old cornflakes. What they've done here is extraordinarily stupid. In fact, everything they've done post time skip is so questionable that it makes me wonder if they're secretly working in favor of Luffy because we have yet to see a competent decision made by these five men. And if Morgans was to, you know, actually tell the truth here, then he could probably start an overnight revolution, a revolution funded entirely by ink, paper, and an ass ton of seagulls. So I have to believe that Morgan's decision here was calculated by the elders, particularly because Morgans confirms just how well Dr. Vegapunk is known throughout the world, which was quite the surprise to me because for the last two decades, He's just been referred to as this mysterious science man, neither good nor evil. But now we know that his public perception is, well, overwhelmingly good. He's been implementing his technology and helping so, so many islands, none of which we've actually visited. I mean, Karakuri Island aside because he was born there. But honestly, it seems like the only people who didn't know about Vegapunk were us, the readers. And this really does solidify my belief that Big News Morgans is legitimately the most powerful character in One Piece through sheer influence alone. He has power that Dragon could only dream of for his cause and power that not even the five elders can hope to control. Plus this is also reinforced by the fact that, and this is crazy, but Morgans is actually deciding what the story is before it's even happened. Navy comes into conflict with Straw Hats. That hasn't actually happened yet. So Morgans is acting like the author of this world. Regardless of what the truth is, he's already planned the story. And it makes you wonder just how many things that we may take for granted could be flat out lies. I don't know. I, I don't know what to think anymore. All I do know is that Morgans is going to make the rest of the series incredibly entertaining because what he's just done is going to have a massive effect on the Straw Hats going forward. Because everyone, and I mean everyone, is going to see the story. Everyone reads Newsbird and a lot of people are gonna be gunning for the Straw Hats as a result, both allies and not that. 
enemies. First and foremost, this may finally bring Dragon into the conversation. He has a very clear relationship with Vegapunk, and to a degree, they share the same general goal of world goodliness. But they're friends and comrades, and look, this would be pretty funny if this was the thing that finally prompted Dragon to pay a visit to his son. Or, you know, finally prompted Dragon to do anything. Literally anything. For a man who is so set on action, he does very little of said action himself, being absent during his grand plan at the Reverie, in favor of spending time on the beach at Momoiro Island. And if there was ever a reason for Dragon to actively seek out Luffy because we know it has nothing to do with parenting, then recovering Vegapunk is a pretty good one. Give me my Vegapunk so that I can use him to do more revolutionizing. Also, hi, I'm your dad. And the onus would be on Dragon to do this because there isn't a whole lot of reason for Luffy to ever seek out his father. It's especially difficult because Dragon is currently in the first half of the Grand Line, which we're not going back to anytime soon, so it's very much up to Dragon to make something happen here. He's not the only one though, because this is also big news for all of the former Mads members. Thinking about it, we may actually get to see both Caesar and Judge react to this news as part of their cover story, since it seems to be weaving in and out of current story relevance. And this may even trigger them to seek out Vegapunk now that he's no no longer under the protection of the world government. Maybe not so much to have an old time get together. Like, remember when we did all of that horrible shit together? <laughs> yeah, and you didn't like it, but we did, but in good times. Probably wouldn't be for that, but perhaps for some sort of revenge, which I wouldn't put past either of them, especially Caesar, who blew up Vegapunk's entire lab after having a clown hissy fit. Something I didn't comment on in the chapter review was the man's cover page. But there are some big things happening here, quite literally with Queen, who has almost achieved a perfect state of rotund existence. But all three of them are almost in their final forms. Caesar now has the gas cloak, and Judge has evolved from ugly teenager to equally as aesthetically challenged adult. I wonder how many years have passed between their formation page and this page. But I also wonder if this is leading to a Mads reunion, because all over the world, they're all kind of coming together. Caesar and Judge in this cover story, Vegapunk and Clone Stussy on Egghead Island, and then we've got Miss Buckin encouraging Marco to seek out Vegapunk. Really, the only one we haven't heard from is Queen, and that's probably due to how thoroughly sucked dry he got by Ryokugyu, who just want to point this out, was also the Admiral who beat and captured Weevil. So there is a world where both Queen and Weevil are being held in a similar, if not the exact same location, which would then also become part of the Mads Convergence. And actually, Morgan's publishing this article has some pretty big implications for Marco. If he actually does take Bakken seriously, then his next action would either be to pursue Weevil or to seek out Vegapunk. The latter of which now takes him directly back to the Straw Hats, with another Mads member who we may get to see interact with her own clone. You know, I'm really excited that the Weevil storyline is finally going somewhere, but I really want to know exactly where that where is, because all of these threads are coming together, but it's just so hard to determine their destination. The world government themselves are also not to be ignored here. Luffy was an absolute pain to them before, but now that he's awakened his devil fruit into a form that they both recognize and fear, as well as possessing a Nico Robin and a Vegapunk, well, this could lead to a full-on declaration of war against the Straw Hats. Because at this point, how much longer can they just sit and pretend that their immediate doom isn't knocking at the door? Luffy is quite clearly now exhibiting sun god behavior. He also has someone who can decipher the history of the Void Century, and now he has the finest technological mind of the future, which was actually in the past, but will also be in the future. After giving him a three billion berry bounty, he's well out of the realm where we can ignore his actions, and a plan may be concocted to commence a marine for 2.0. In order to lure in Luffy just as they lured and killed Whitebeard, which I'm sure would make Sakazuki a very happy man because he'd actually get to do something for a change. You know, Dragon and Sakazuki actually have a lot in common post time skip. Lots of big talk, but mostly physically hiding behind telepathic snail phones. But look, the real X factor in this is still Vegapunk himself. Stella's disappearance was a crazy twist. And regardless of what Morgan's publishes, we've still got to reckon with his sudden lack of existence. So we could be in a situation where everyone is targeting Luffy or only for them to actually find him and have him go. Nah, mate, we, we don't actually have this Vegapunk guy. No idea where he is. Last time I saw him, he was an old man, but then apparently he became a baby and then the baby vanished. No, no, weird guy. And with the latest chapter, who knows how many, if any, Vegapunks are going to escape Egghead Island? Because even though CP0 failed in their mission to assassinate them, some mystery entity is really picking up the slack in the old murder zone. In a more meta sense, Vegapunk is also a bit of a problem to have around narratively, and it's because he just knows too much. 
much. Having Vegapunk with us means carrying the answer to almost every question we have in the series. You know, tell me about Dragon, tell us about the Void Century, tell me about the World Government. Dude literally knows almost everything there is to know about everything, hence his massive island-sized brain. So it's really hard to have a character like him around and still maintain all of the fun mystery of the series. So this might be Oda's way of giving us, you know, a tiny bit of information. We learned about some Devil Fruits, we had a glimpse into the Void Century, but then cutting that off, sort of like the Yamato problem. Because having read Odin's journal, Yamato more or less knows how this series ends. And having a character like that on the crew is difficult because Luffy really doesn't like spoilers. Still, I feel like either Yamato or Momonosuke should have offered to tell someone what was in the journal. It feels like very, very relevant information. <laughs> Back to egg heady things. Interestingly, right now, one of the only major characters that doesn't have a clear connection to Vegapunk would be Shanks. And I was also going to say that Blackbeard may have some interest in Vegapunk because Blackbeard, he really likes fruit and Vegapunk, he, he knows how to grow fruit. But ultimately, I think that both Shanks and Blackbeard are both being seeded as events to happen after this particular story collision. Shanks and Blackbeard are like the final story cluster to deal with. And I look at everything happening right now and I find it so, so hard to believe that Oda is planning on ending the series in the time period he's given, which if we're sticking to schedule would be about three years from now. I just, I don't see that happening. And that's, that's a good thing for me and us and all of us. And you know what? Funnily enough, I didn't write an ending to this video. So um, it's done. 